can go back to your to your Oxford University yeah. days. Mm. Um, in your your first game, you played against Yorkshire, didn't That's you? That's right. Yes. Who was the first wicket that you ever took? Um, I can't remember, but it. I must have um, got a wicket because the, the the next man who came in was Len Hutton. Right. And he he hadn't opened the innings. He came in about number six, I suppose. Right. And um, I I bowled him with my second ball. Did you? Against him. Fantastic. Which rather annoyed me in the sense that I had got it all planned to get him uh, on the third ball. But <laughs> so he was your second wicket? But yes, yes, right. he would have been. Mm. So that must have been quite a, oh, oh, a well, feather in your cap. <laughs> It was amazing, really. I mean, it was, as you said, my first first class match, and um, I did get some other worthwhile wickets. Indeed, Dennis Compton, um, Bill Edrich, I mean, Jack Eichen. <laughs> when you're sitting here talking about that, mm. they're legends of the legendary names in the game, yes, mm. and you played against them. Yes, oh yes. Mm. Um, and one can hope to impress one's grandchildren, but the trouble is, they've never heard of them. <laughs> but what, was, what was cricket like in those days compared to the cricket that you're seeing now at the first class games? Well, it was very different in that you didn't have covered pitches, right. you didn't have protective no. gear, and um, um, Brian Close, I think, of Yorkshire, who mm -hmm. played for some time yes. as well. He, he, there was a picture of him with bruises all Indeed. over himself when he was playing the West Indies yes. at Lords. You know? Yes. Um, so it was very different in that sense, and and also when one played at Lords, um, the um, the likes of Dennis Compton and. The song came out of a different pavilion, you know. Because you were an amateur. Yes. Well, I mean, obviously Oxford yes, was all amateur, but yeah. um, the, um, <laughs> uh, the the most of the MCC side that we played, I suppose, that day, um, were, I don't know, quite well, quite a lot were, were professionals, and they had to come out of a different pavilion. And I, but I did get. Uh, five wickets at Lords, uh, including Dennis Compton. You did. Uh, we played one match against Gloucestershire, Bristol, and on the Saturday it was a lovely day, and they scored a lot of runs. I bowled 35 overs, <laughs> um, and on the Monday, then on the Sunday it rained, and on the Monday it was a dreadful dry wicket, and. Um, uh, we, um, we, well, we lost an awful lot of wickets early on, and I, I went in number 10 to join Martin Donnelly, do you right. remember the yes, New Zealander? New Zealander. And um, we put on 70 runs together. Um, my contribution was two. <laughs> Martin Donnelly was an incredible player, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Frank Chester, the umpire, uh, said that he reckoned he was the best left-hander in the world. Yeah. And I was lucky to be there with him. We were in the same college at Oxford, Worcester College. Can we just talk about your, your war service? Because obviously you served in the Second World War. Yes. Uh, mm. just, just talk us through that. And you recently had a, an honour bestowed on you, haven't you? Well, I have, yes. The Légion d'honneur which the French government decided in 2014, I think, which was 70 years after D-Day, would be offered to um, anyone who had been involved in the liberation of France. And, um, uh, well, I, I was in Normandy, but had an undistinguished career there. <laughs> um, and, uh, but anyway, I was invited along and uh, we, this was only last week, I was in the Légion d'honneur.
You, and you're obviously a keen follower of, of Somerset. You follow them from a distance, and uh... oh, very much, yes. Mm. But uh, I, um, I have sometimes been up, and the chap I played golf with, was, he's the vice president until they did away with vice president. Yeah. Um, and his wife too. She was more keen than he on cr watching cricket, and still goes regularly. And I've been up with them and at, at Oxford. We used to give um, give the players a sort of uh, three course meal almost <laughs> for lunch. And I remember sitting next to Jim Sims. Remember the slow bowler, Middlesex. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And. Um, he said to me, you, you, um, in those days you, you didn't sort of sit you know, one side over there and the other yeah. side over there. You mixed up, certainly at Oxford, whether yeah. it, it happened much at other grounds, I'm not sure. Um, and he said, what is um, the first thing for a bowler to get right? And I said, length. And he was rather taken aback because he, he didn't think I would say that. And, but it was the right answer. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> length, direction. I can't remember what he would have said that our third one was. Right. <laughs> and, and what about the bats they play with now? They seem odd to me, and especially um, the fact that they are rather squared on both sides. We used to have a bat which was shaped on one side so that you could run it in yeah. on the run out and so many people now seem to put it in flat instead of going in running it in um, I don't know why they've gone like that Did they supply you with any kit or did you have to supply I them? had to have my own pad, well, my own boots, my own pads, my own box, my own <laughs> jock strap um, I don't think I, and caps and I think we we had to provide it all for ourselves. So if you got your trousers wet, your flannels dirty, you'd have to wash them yourself? Yes, and it didn't please uh, one's uh, mother. <laughs> You've got a cla another claim to fame, haven't you? Uh, that in 1993, you had your obituary in the Cricket ah, Magazine. That, that was my best achievement in cricket. <laughs> yes. Well, Tell uh, us about it. <laughs> Um, well, uh, my wife was rung up by the secretary of the local cricket club and he said how sorry he was to hear I died and if he'd known I'd been ill he'd have come to the funeral and so on. And she said, well, actually, Tony is standing beside me. <laughs> well, and, but the, the, um, the cricketer had got it wrong and I think it was though he didn't admit it in his lifetime. It was Jim Swanton who put them wrong, really, because I think he knew, he had seen the name of my brother um, as having died. Um, anyway, um, it's, uh, I, I had to put the cricket to right and <laughs> tell them what St. Peter said about cricket these days. <laughs> um, <clears throat> And um, uh, they sent me a case of champagne, so we had a, um, an obituary party, that's the invitation. <laughs> Brilliant. That's fantastic.